What color is an apple? You'd probably say red, and you wouldn't be wrong, necessarily. But there's a lot more that goes into it. There's a lot of other colors, and in this video, you can follow side by side while I paint a realistic apple using a lot of other colors besides just red. To start, we can do something called underpainting. And so in this example, I'm using a blue color to underpaint the apple where the shadows are going to be. By using underpainting, when I go back in with red at a later time, it's going to make the whole piece a little bit more cohesive. Another thing that underpainting allows you to do is to create little areas that are going to shine through once you put later layers of paint on. So in this example, I'm using a yellow because if you look at the reference picture, there's a lot of streaks of yellow and orange that shine through the red color of the apple. I know that I'm going to paint a layer of red over the top of this, but if I do that, I won't be able to paint yellow streaks or little yellow dots on top of the apple. So I add the yellow first, and so then when I go back through with the red, I can leave areas exposed to let the yellow parts shine through. It's the same idea as leaving a highlight unpainted. If you leave the yellow there and then paint around it or leave areas unpainted when you go back in with red or any other color, you'll leave areas that shine through and it'll create a more natural and realistic image. So here, even though I know I'm gonna end up with red, I'm also going through with a layer of darker orange because there's layers and levels of different colors in here. It's not just yellow, it's not just blue. There's a ton of different colors presented here and I wanna capture as many of those as I can. Underpainting also gives me an opportunity to create some texture on the apple. So you see I've made some strokes, some light lines, little dots everywhere. All of that's gonna shine through even if I paint red over top. And so this is my opportunity to add a little bit of realism to the apple. Now that I've got all of those layers painted, I am finally going to go in with my red. And you'll notice immediately that when I paint the red over the blue areas, it's coming out a little bit purple, which makes sense. Blue and red would make purple. And this means that my shadows are already kind of sorted. I don't have to go through and darken it with a different color of red or anything like that. I already have a sort of base shadow going on that is giving some realism to the piece. You'll notice here that when I go and paint the red in the left side of the apple, because it's in more light, I'm being a little bit more scratchy, I'm leaving areas of yellow and orange exposed, because I want those pieces to shine through. This is just a first layer, so you'll notice that it's probably a little less saturated than I will want it to be at the end, but it's going in the general direction, and it's always easier to keep adding paint than it is to remove it. In this case, I want to start darkening up some of those edges, really make those shadows really contrast the highlights of the apple. So I go in with a more saturated red, and I layer it over top of the bottom right side, as well as adding it to some of the mid-tones of the apple. The indent at the top of the apple where the stem is, is another good opportunity to think about your colors and your highlights. You'll notice that it's a really sharp line between the dark shadow where the stem comes out of and the top of the apple. So one thing while I'm doing that is I want to make sure that the paper is dry so that none of the paint bleeds into my highlight. The more crisp of a line that I have there, the more realistic that shine is going to look. Apples are shiny fruits, so I want that highlight to be crisp. If it was not a shiny fruit, if it was a more of a matte finish, then maybe I could blend some of it in together. But if I want it to be shiny, I need the highlight to be crisp. So at this point, I think I've got a pretty good base layer of red over everything, but it is a little bit undersaturated. So what I'm gonna finally do is go in with a pretty saturated red and add saturation all over it. I start with the middle, because I know it's gonna be sort of the mid-tones where most of the color is gonna pop. I add some to the highlighted areas, still leaving those yellow streaks and orange streaks to shine through. And then I also add to the bottom right and make sure that the, the shadows are quite vibrant and contrasting with the highlights. A little bit of a trick when you're painting into the highlighted areas is to make sure that your brush isn't too wet. Uh, you can make it more dry and then it's a little bit easier to control where the paint is going. You can leave finer details on there and you don't have to work or worry about everything blending together. Hopefully this is a helpful tutorial and if it's interesting or useful to you, leave a like, drop a comment, tell me what you want me to paint next. I'm hoping to turn some of the shorts into longer content, so if you have anything you're interested in, let me know. Thanks.